Hey, what's going on YouTube? It is General Daryl, your coach at Charlotte Charizards, bringing you the APA Season 3 Week 16 build versus Coach Panther 2 and the Carolina Clefables. Coming into Week 6, we did pick up an unfortunate loss this week against Kurt and the Adelaide Absols for Week 5. Um, my whole team build probably just wasn't actually complete for that game. It probably wasn't the best team I brought. Even though I went really in-depth to it, it still probably wasn't the best. And um, I just lost my win cons against Kurt and it just went downhill from there. So hopefully we can bring it back this week against Panther, but unfortunately Panther is one of the tougher battlers in the league. I do think he's one of the best and I do think his draft is um, one of the best as well. Um, Panther's a good friend, one of the fellow commissioners, and um, I've never beat him. <laughs> of course I have, um, he, he agrees with me that I have gotten better since the few times we played. We never really faced too much in regular seasons, which is weird. but. Um, I just never beat him, so uh, hopefully we can at least come closer this time around and be a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to throw up the matchup on the board for this week. As you see, he has got Mega Aerodactyl, Slazzle, Virizion, Mew, Linoon, Curum, Blastoise, Nidoqueen, Clefable, Stunfisk, and Ferrothorn, with his two Z users being Mew and Curum. Now just looking at his roster, it's very bulky and still pretty offensive and scary. Um, he made a few transactions that kind of helped him out. He used to have like Galvantula, um, Incineroar, stuff like that, but he opted to switch out um, stuff and he got um, Salazzle, Virizion, and Stunfisk for FAs, which is a pretty good add to his team in my opinion. So Mega Aerodactyl very fast, beats or outspeeds everything on my team, and um, Stone Edge plus Earthquake does a lot versus my team, it really messes up my bulky mons and I need to work on that. Um, I mean, I do have um, Gorgeist that could possibly check those two, but the fact it's Aerodactyl, it doesn't help me there. Um, Salazzle, so not too much of a threat, um, Toxpex absolutely walls it, even if it is a sub-disable set, because then it can't set up because of Haze. Um, Virizion, once again, not too much of a threat, but a sub-SD set could be a possibility for this match. Mew, um, Panther, one of some of his favorite mods is Mew and Clefable, and he uses them both really well. Mew, I'm not exactly sure what he would bring this week, um, but it's still going to be a threat nonetheless. Um, if I had to guess, um... It'd probably be a speedy HP Mew or something like that, which is some tech like Ice Beam and stuff like that. Um, next up is Linoon. Linoon, I am pretty worried about just because he can't put in some work, but I brought proper counters. Basically, just Belly Drum with um, my Papa Berry is so dangerous. Um, he hasn't used it completely so uh, well so far, as he keeps bringing um, odd HP Linoon. <laughs> um, but it's still a threat, even though he might not uh, prep it correctly. <laughs> Um, Kiram is such a major threat for my team, it absolutely just um, destroys my cores. Um, I'm definitely expecting a sub set this week and it's going to be a major threat. Whether he has leftovers or um, uh, ground Z with that, that's what I'd be expecting. Blastoids, if he brings it, it's going to be defensive just to take on Charizard and um, Lando T. Um, I a million, expect, million percent expect that. Um, Nidoqueen, he uses Nidoqueen very well. Um, I'm expecting a bulk heat with like Stealth Rocks and stuff like that because he does like his hazards. Might have Sucker Punch in order to hit my Alakazam since Alakazam do is a pretty decent threat versus his team I would say. Um, and then Clefable, once again another possible Stealth Rocker. I am expecting to be unaware just to be a proper counter to Charizard X. Even though Clefable is not a switch into Charizard X because it does get two shot of life Flare Blitz. Um, Clefable is still a proper um, setup stopper which is definitely helpful versus my team. Um, Stunfisk, not really expecting it too much, doesn't have the best matchup, but it is a decent stealth rocker and pretty solid spadef mon if you want it to. And then lastly, Ferrothorn, amazing hazard mon with um, spikes and stealth rocks. Um, pretty, be a pretty good counter to Greninja's spadef as well as Alakazam, so I could definitely see the possibility is coming. Um, so there's that. But as for the actual sick that I expect him to bring, I was expecting Mega Aerodactyl, um, Mew, Curum, Blastoise, Nidoqueen, and Clefable. A million percent. Um, I even mocked with um, three people, and two of them brought that team. So that's why I'm kind of expecting him to bring those six. And um, as for my team build, I just really wanted to bring more of an offense of this team. Like normally, I bring some other bulk along with Toxivex, but I didn't want to bring Balance first Panther. I just wanted to be on, like, try and be on the offensive end as much as possible. Even though Mega Aerodactyl and Kiram will actually break through this team still a decent amount, um, it's just going to make it a really close battle. And if I can. Um, in some way get it in my favor then it's just about going to be game kind of because it um, I feel like this game is just going to be um, once you have momentum near the end game it's just about over so first up we got um, Serial Killer or Alakazam with Psychic Shadow Ball Hidden Power Fire Encounter with the Focus Sash Magic Card um, I'm not going to lie um, nicknaming this thing Serial Killer multiple times actually caused me to misspell Serial Killer on assignment 
<laughs> instead of actually pro uh, properly spelling it S E R I A L or whatever, I spelled it like actual cereal. Um, my professor questioned me. Okay, so um, moving on for um, <laughs> the actual reason I have Alakazam here. Basically, Focus Sash Counter just really helped me versus the Mega Aerodactyl as well as the Linoon being a proper check and keep this thing in the back, and it was just um, kind of a last resort thing. He might be expecting it, but at the same time, um, he can't help it versus some things. Like if it's Linoon, he can't really switch out. If he wants to, he can try and belly drum spam versus me. But um, I have more counters than he does belly drum, so. Um, Psychic just does a whole lot versus Steam. Shadow Ball, of course, for the Mew and whatnot. And then um, Hidden Power Fire is purely for that Ferrothorn. I am kind of expecting it, so if he does bring it, um, I'll put in a lot of work versus that. And uh, Alakazam was just going to put in a decent amount of work. I didn't really feel like bringing anything else. Like I mentioned, I tried to put as much offense, which just only talk specs if I could. And uh, speaking of talk spec, we have that. Um, up next, we have Hama. Holding the Black Sludge Regenerate ability, of course. Um, pretty defensive with a, just a little bit spadef. Basically, I put enough defense not to get two shot by a Jolly Aerodactyl Earthquake. Um, I have Scald, Haze, Recover, and Toxic. Um, I can't allow any setup on like Verzeon and Salazzle, so I have to make sure I bring Haze. Um, even though I kind of wanted something, I wanted to see if something could break Kiram subs, but it's just impossible because Kiram is so bulky. Even Gunk Shot from Tox Specs doesn't break um, Kiram sub if he's like HP invested. It's, it's ridiculous. It even gets smacked down, even though that's less damage than Gunk Shot because of Stab and whatnot, of course. Um, even before Stab, it's weaker. Um, it's just nothing helped me out, so I had to put Toxic on this thing just so I had a chance of Toxic and Kiram before it gets up a sub. Like, if that's a switch in, I'd really just click um, Toxic, even though I do risk him going into Needle Queen. Um, because Needle Queen does have a great offensive presence versus my team, I can't really switch into Earth Power. If I go Lando, there's a possibility I switch into Ice Beam, and that's just gonna hurt me even more because I lose my Lando. So. Um, Toxic is a good check to the cure, but at the same time, you can possibly read that and get momentum in with Needle Queen, so I have to be very careful there. But at the same time, Toxic on um, cure is so very important because that thing is a problem for me if he runs it extremely bulky, so I have to watch out for that. But basically, Toxic X just walls majority of his team. Um, the only things that can really break it, of course, would be like a nasty plot Mew, um, offensive Needle Queen. And then um, if he's like an adamant Aerodactyl, or if my Toxic already got weakened, then he can take me out from there. Um, next up is my Charizard. I wanted to bring uh, Roku. Still wanted to bring Dragon Dance, even though he does have the Clefable, because I was feeling like with this team I could definitely get enough um, um, chances to get a hit off on Clefable with this amount of offense in order for Charizard to hopefully sweep in the end. Um, also, I only needed to get Clefable down, like, um, I believe it was 45%. I mean, which is still a decent amount, but still. I only need to get uh, Clefable down 45% in order to. Um, get up a Dragon Dance and just sweep the rest of his team, unless he did bring a um, Scarf Counter and Verizion, which could um, get a good amount off with close combat, and then I would just be going down a possible Flare Blitz recoil. But Flare Blitz plus Thunder Punch really just destroys his team. Um, it just hurts Aerodactyl. Slazzle, I need a little bit more chip on, but that wouldn't be too hard. Slazzle's already frail as well. Um, Verizion gets blown back, Mew gets blown back, Linoon, Purim, etc. Um, it just did a number versus his team. Uh, Roost, I don't really know if Roost was probably the best option because I didn't really see um, what I could just get free defense on Roost. It most likely like a Fable. Um, if it did Thunder Wave me, that was, ah uh, yeah, that was the reason behind it. If it did Thunder Wave me, I could get up Roost and stuff versus that. I only have 236 in attack because that's all I needed in order to get a decent Thunder Punch roll on Blastoise after uh, defense or something like that, I believe. Maybe it was the two shot. Maybe, I don't remember. Maybe it was a for sure two shot. I don't I don't know, dude. <laughs> uh, this was a while ago. But um, Charizard is definitely going to put in the work. He has no switch into a Flare Blitz, which is really nice. Um, his only um, main resist is Blastoise and Mega Aerodactyl. Mega Aerodactyl can't come in because it risks getting burned, even though it does take it decently well. And then um, Blastoise is definitely switching, so that's what I have to watch out for if he does bring it. Um, next up is Cavalion. I am bringing Dual Dance just because it does so much versus his team, but at the same time, I don't understand how some mods really run Dual Dance. It's just I don't get how it's possible because most teams have a decent counter to a Pokemon and getting up two set of moves just almost seemed impossible at sometimes so like I don't get it but I wanted to try it still I'm gonna give Cavalion a chance but as of right now I feel like it's on un an unlucky Pokemon <laughs> for both this and P4G um Sword Dance, Rock Polish, Iron Head, Close Combat it's all I need to really blow back his team I have Steel Z mainly because I'm plus two SD I am allowed to take out um defensive Needle Queen after Stealth Rocks which is a definite possibility, even though I'm not carrying stuff this week. So that was kind of a little 
dumb calc. Um, but other way, it's still a roll um, to knock out the Needle Queen if it is max defense, which I am kind of expecting. Um, Cobalion really just does a answer, solid answers team. It's also another counter to Linoon. Um, Cobalion plus Alakazam are my only checks to Linoon if he does get a Belly Drum up. Because they do outspeed him and he has to hit me with extreme speed, extreme speed will only doing max 60% to my Cobalion if he is the adamant variant. So we eat that up and we do one shot of a close combat. And um, next up we do have Greninja. Greninja puts in so much work this week versus him. Um, I really hope it does a decent amount. Dark Pulse, Hydro Bomb, Pinabar, Fire, Water Shuriken with the Life Orb. Um, I needed to run Water Shuriken just because Aerodactyl is such a major threat to my team that I only have two checks. Um, technically three. Uh, my checks being, um, of course, my Scarf Alakazam, or sorry, Focus Sash Alakazam, um, Greninja here, and um, my Choice Scarf Lando, which I'll get to in a second. But basically, Greninja just two shots like his entire team with Hydro Pump. The only counter is kind of Verizion. Um, I was going to consider running Gunk Shot, but the fact is Hydro Pump already two shots Clefable. And then Hydro Pump actually does more to a defensive Clef than Gunk Shot does. So I really just didn't want to bring it, and I'd rather just bring Hidden Power Fire to go in and hit the Ferrothorn. But that doesn't still let me two shot Verizion, I don't believe. Because Verizion is pretty solid spadef. I believe it's like 121 or something like that. So um, still, Greninja's going to put in a lot of work if he doesn't have the Verizion. Um, it really has no counter to it. I mean, Kiram is going to eat it decently if he's bulky, but I really wouldn't expect him to want to get all that damage off on Kiram. Um, I figured he'd want to get up subs and verse for his stock specs and stuff like that. So really no good switch in unless he has Ferrothorn or the Verzeon. Um, even then, Dark Pulse and Hidden Bar Fire can knock out some certain forms of Ferrothorn if he's um, not heavily spadef invested, since I am running Modest Gren. Um, basically, I was kind of relying on him to speed creep um, certain mons. So then um, Greninja could freely run Modest this week. And uh, lastly, we do have Lando T here. Lando T is running the Choice Scarf this week because I do need to counter to his Mega Aerodactyl. We are running Stone Edge, Earthquake, U-Turn, and Defog. Um, this gives me a good um, counter to Slazzle if it does get set up and my Talk Specs died for some reason. Um, gives me a counter to a Nasty Plot Mew. Um, Kyurem, like I already mentioned, if that's scary offensive for some reason. Um, and of course, mainly the Mega Aerodactyl. I unfortunately have to bring Jolly because Adamant Scarf Lando T does not outspeed um, like a max speed uh, Mega Aerodactyl. Even though two out of three of my mocks people did bring an Adamant Aerodactyl, I just still don't want to risk it because um, I want to make sure I can get off the damage with Stone Edge. Basically, if I can't get off that Stone Edge damage, then I'm screwed. Because Water Shuriken, even if it does get three hits, it's only doing max um, 55, I believe, or something like that. So I definitely need to get off that Stone Edge damage just to ensure that um, Greninja can pick it off afterwards. Um, Earthquake is just pretty decent versus team, not the best. Um, defensive Clef and Mew, and of course Blastoise just absolutely wall this thing. But Scarf just felt, felt um, pretty necessary for my Aerodactyl. Um, U-turn, of course, for momentum, and I had to bring Defog just because he is some of the best hazards in the game. Um, of course, he has so many Stealth Rock users. His top tier Pokemon are all Stealth Rock users. Bring Mega Aerodactyl, Mew, Clefable, Ferrothorn, Nidoqueen, um, he even has Stunfisk as well. Just amazing Stealth Rock users. It's actually ridiculous. And then he has T-Spikes and um, Spikes with uh, Ferrothorn and Nidoqueen. So even though we absorbed the Toxic Spikes with Toxifex, I still wanted to be able to possibly get rid of Spikes because the ACC does like um, hazard stacking one another because we know we don't like removal too much. But I had to bring it just in case. So I'm definitely not liking this game just because it's Panther, but the matchup isn't necessarily too bad. It's kind of even both ways. Um, Really, I'm just scared of the Mega Aerodactyl and the Kyurem. I know there are going to be issues. I'm really interested to see what Mew he brings this week, because he was always very solid in bringing a solid Mew set. And, um, yeah, that'll be it. So make sure to look for the look forward to the battle tomorrow and check out my P4G next-gen battle that went up yesterday, if you haven't yet. Um, that'll be it for me today. Sub, like, share, deuces.